Thank you so much for being here. Like, I really appreciate it. I wanted to start off, like, tell us a little bit about yourself. About me? Well, yeah. That's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I um, started playing music when I was really young and um, basically dedicated myself to it. I mean, when I, was in, when I was in high school, I basically graduated after my sophomore year. I could have started taking college classes and everything, but by that, at that point, the bug had already gotten me. Yeah. So that's like, I didn't choose music, music chose me, and, and I was pretty much, I had no choice after that. It basically kidnapped me. And, yeah. um, and, I, and it was just something that I really dedicated my life to. And I always thought like one day I'll be, I could be driving down the, down the road my scrubs or whatever, you know, because yeah. yeah, I'm a doctor, and <laughs> turn on the radio and go, man, I could have done that, you know, yeah. and to, and so I, I just basically said, you know, we get one life, so I might as well just completely dedicate myself to this, and it got hard at one point, you know, because um, and I was really tested in that, because um, I had become really jaded at one point, and then from just being through the music industry, and, and, and I found out I had a son who was eight months old, and, and oh, back my in my God. hometown, so I was like... <laughs> <laughs> um, which was very strange and a whole other story, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> so I moved back there. I was I was pretty much done with the music industry, and then it was through showing him music and um, the same way that I was the same things that I grew up on, like Simon and Garfunkel and Cat Stevens and Gordon Lightfoot, and all these things that were so huge in my brain. Like I remember like what my carpet looked like when I was a little kid because of, yeah. because of the music, you know? It's like, mm -hmm. it, it really took me somewhere and I just wanted to be a part of that, you know? Um, so um, after lots of trials and tribulations and going on a TV singing show, which I, which I you know, swore I would never do. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but, you know, I just kind of wanted, at that point I, I wanted to get back into music and, mm -hmm. and, and it was, um, it was a, uh, that was the that was the best way for me to really make a big splash because you know ap contacts in the music industry go away after after a few years of, of not talking to them. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. And um, and uh, so so uh, you know it was it was it was it was a really hard long struggle that most people probably would have gave up on and then and then all of a sudden I ended up in Stone Temple Pilots, which is one of my favorite bands. <laughs> right? It's like me joining like the Led Zeppelin of my era. You know, so. <laughs> So, you know, it was, I feel blessed, but I, I'm also very humbled by it because, you know, if it would have happened when I was younger, I might not have been as ready as I, as I am for it now. Yeah. So. Oh, that's, that's so super cool. Yeah, so what certain things, like, led you and inspired you to be, like, in the music business? Because I know you were talking about, like, just from a young age, you just wanted to be a part of it. But is that really what inspired you, or is there something that really just traumatically just like... Yeah, it's, it's, it's more of the, the music and, and the place it takes you. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and it's like the place where dreams are made of, you know. I always kind of equate it to like, like, the, I, like music is, is the ocean, and, mm -hmm. and you, get to, you get to ride the wave in, and, and you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I get that, yeah. But if you disrespect it, 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 it can kill you. <laughs> so, wow! So, <laughs> But, you know, a lot of people crash and burn in this industry. No, so, it's um, very uh, true. So it's about, you know, keeping your keeping your head and, and doing it for the right things. So mm -hmm. so being a part of the music business has never really been, um, I mean, it's, it's it's always the dream to be doing it, making it, making music and doing that. But if there was no business, I'd still be doing it. Yeah. I'd be doing it. Right for free. So it's like your, your passion mm -hmm. is more towards music than anything else that you would have put your career towards? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, because I was so dedicated. And, and, and I spent hours upon hours. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and my lights on in my room and my guitar is feeding back because I fell asleep with it on and, and the record player is like spinning and, and the, the needles like skipping in the middle and I'm just like well, I just fell asleep and my guitar has been feeding back for probably three hours you know so it, it was just I used to get grounded a lot too and I was there, so that helped me with all my, my um, I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> just the rebel child. <laughs> Um, one other question I wanted to ask, is it any different being on a, like a band compared to being a solo artist? Like producing your own music to being into a different yeah, like, band? Yeah, because I had a band that I was doing when I, when I auditioned for SCP and mm -hmm. um, we were doing really well actually. We were recording in Las Vegas and I actually had to sneak out to do my first audition with SCP. Really? Yeah, because I didn't, because I, I was working with a big producer and he was doing everything for free after I paid him for the first song. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if he finds out I'm going to do this, he's going to kick me out of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him I was going to the strip, you know, to, I don't know, time went on or something, and, and I ended up taking a flight over to 
doing my <laughs> audition and flying back real quick. They never knew. Um, Jummer found out. But, uh, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> See how I no, it's, no, it's okay. That's totally fine. Just more of just being on a, a band. Oh, yeah. Cause being, <laughs> and and when I, even without in my band, which wasn't necessarily a solo project, it was mm -hmm. still a band. I felt like I had to micromanage everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like I had to I had to be a part of every decision that was made, and and that's just because I didn't want anything to get screwed up. And then I, you know, you you join a band like Stone Temple Pilots, where they're like, hey, uh, can you write some lyrics and melodies to these songs? And you're like, you get to put the headphones on and hear yeah. this song for the first time that no one's ever heard, and you basically know that everything else is just taken care of, and all you have to do is concentrate on doing yeah. that one job. You know. Oh, that's so cool. So that's refreshing and and. And it's a, it's a blessing to, to be with those guys. That's so cool. Uh, I also, my mom, uh, when I called her that I was interviewing you, <laughs> goes, uh, he was on X Factor. Um, and I was just going to ask you because I watch X Factor like so many times and I could have sworn I seen you somewhere and I knew it was from that. <laughs> so um, how, what was that feeling like? Like, explain the feeling that you got like when you like was in it because I watched the show so many times but I'm talking to someone that's been in it and that's yeah. well, so interesting for me it's a lot different for me probably than the most people that were mm -hmm. on that show because like yeah, explain said, explain yeah. your side of it like, of course like, yeah like uh, coming from you know a person who's dedicated their whole life and, and and had to struggle and moved to LA and back and and there was a, you know there was a lot of dark times in there that we won't get into but um, it was really um, so there was, a, there was a part of me that, that despised that kind of thing because people go and stand in line for one day and they get their shot. Yeah. As opposed to people who have to really pay their dues year after year after mm -hmm. year and sometimes still don't get their shot. Yeah. And, um, and I had been so close, you know, before um, with my band Dry Cell. We were signed to Warner Brothers in like 2000. Um, and um, so I, when I went there, I wanted to con control what I, what I, what I could. So I made, that's when I decided to do Hallelujah because I actually did research and had to find out what artists um, will even let you do their song at that mm -hmm. point. Some of them will let yeah. you do the, your, their song later on in the competition, but not like for auditions. Mm -hmm. So I was going through all these auditions from other shows and what, just basically to get the information of what songs were available because mm -hmm. I, I didn't get the list yet. And Hallelujah was on there, and I went to a, I went to a Catholic school from kindergarten to fourth grade, and I was an altar boy at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and um, so I, I I always had a love for that song, and and I also studied how long the segments were and how long the performances were, and so I made my own version of Hallelujah. Yeah. That basically they couldn't touch it, you know. Yeah. They, they, they had just had to leave it alone. You know, wow. and, I, and it was a whole day. I had to get there at six thirty in the morning, and it's just you know a million people there, and everyone's clamoring for attention. Yeah, trying to one up each other. And I'm there with my son and my parents, and, and it's a long day for them. And um, and everyone comments about my hair, but my hair looked really good in the morning when I left. <laughs> it's just like, a, I'll make this a whole point. day, a whole day of like sitting there. I remember at one point my mom goes, "You really not need to put yourself out there." And I'm like, "I'm like, mom, don't worry about it. As soon as I sing, everything will change." Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. But I did drink way too much um, um, ginger tea, and so when I got done singing. It did something to my stomach, like oh, the singing, no. and, and I had like the worst Sleep. stomach ache when I oh when I, I was like almost like in tears. But if you watch that audition, the thunder that goes off at the end, and Demi's like even God approves or something like that. <laughs> and what they don't show is as soon as I walked off the stage, the power went out. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. yeah, the power went out as soon as I walked off stage because I was in like the, the whole place. The whole place. Wow. wow. You literally turned off the lights. <laughs> you you made your entrance hall. and your appearance. When you're off stage, you have to go through this hallway, mm -hmm. and then they, they, you know, they're filming you walking through the hallway and all that stuff. <laughs> but when the lights went out, it was black in that hallway. Oh <laughs> so, my god! So I'm like, so it was great. That's something they never talk about. But oh I felt, I felt like that was more of a sign than the thunder. But oh <laughs> my god, that's that, insane. Yeah, it was pretty cool. The way yeah, that was I, the hallelujah, and I gave props to the G man and you know, yeah. and all that, so. That is so super cool. Um, what what life advice 
would you give to students that want to go into the music business? Just something that you would more give out to the world. Well, my first thing would be don't take advice from me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the main thing would be not to chase the wrong things and to make sure that you're, you're, you're respecting what you're trying to do, not, not the people that are trying to sell you and, and buy you and all these other things, but if you do it your own way and you do it and you do it 100% and you stay true to your, your vision, um, you know, there's a, there's a, the payoff is much better mm -hmm. inside, you know, whether, no matter what you get paid. Because yeah. um, it's like the gratification of, of knowing that you were right and, and that you, you are as talented as you, you're, you're hoping to be. Because that was another reason I went on the singing show. I'm like, if I, if I go on there and I bomb, you know, obviously I'm not meant to do this. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, so I guess that would be my advice. Just, you have to really, um, you have to love it and you have to want to do it for the right reasons. Because if you're, if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, it, it, can, uh, it can bite you. Yeah, that's, that's really good advice. I really appreciate that. Um, and don't take advice from me. <laughs> <laughs> that was the biggest part, apparently. <laughs> um, who, who's your idol? That's a weird question, but I wanted um, to ask that. Idol. It could be the music business, it could be anyone. I have lots of idols. <laughs> um, I just have to say Jeff Buckley would be one of them. Um, I love Jeff Buckley. He's my, I just got chills just saying his name. <laughs> um, his version of Hallelujah is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, I'd have to say probably John Lennon, because um, you know he wrote Imagine, which I feel like is probably the best song ever, and, um, just because of the message behind it. Um, yeah. And a lot of people have a lot of people have trouble with that song because it says imagine that there, that there isn't this and imagine there isn't that. Yeah. And people get offended by that, but they don't realize what he's saying is that's the point. Mm -hmm. The fact the fact that you're getting offended that I'm saying imagine if it wasn't yeah if it wasn't here and all we had all we had was each other to rely on and we really believed in each other and how great that would be if we were all pushing in the same direction instead of against each other. Yeah. And so that's why. Um, Definitely have to have John Lennon on there for that. And uh, Rodriguez, he, he was in that documentary called Searching for Sugar Man. Um, I've never heard of it. Where he, um, he was an artist that came up in the, uh, there's a documentary about it, it's called Searching for Sugar Man. Mm -hmm. And um, his name is Rodriguez, and he sounds kind of like Dylan. And uh, he came out in the late 60s, early 70s. But his, his stuff just kind of bombed, like it never went anywhere. Really? And, he, and he's the, the humblest guy. He's the most humble, nicest man I've ever met in my life. And um, he just went and did, you know, hard labor jobs and, and did, you know, mm -hmm. worked his ass off pretty much um, his whole life. But he never knew that um, someone took a bootleg of his, of his record and, and they went over to um, South Africa. Mm -hmm. And it blew up. They became bigger than, like, the Beatles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bigger than, like, wow. Oh he my became gosh. one of the biggest artists. And you've met him? Yeah, because yeah, oh, he's from wow. Detroit. Oh, Detroit. wow. And uh, he had no idea about it. And there was all these stories about how he, like, he burned himself on stage. And there was, oh, just, there was a million stories about how he died. died. Was this, what was this documentary called? It's called Searching for Sugar Man. Searching for Sugar Man. Because they That's found him. During, Go watch Searching for Sugar Man. <laughs> they found him during the making of this documentary. Wow. And they, That's insane. And, uh, and, and they, they interview everyone that he worked with, and, and it's basically his story. And it's it's one of the most beautiful things. Like, he's the closest thing to Jesus, I think, probably exists on, on Earth right now. Wow. You know? And he still lives in the same house in, in, an, in Detroit, in downtown, wow. and gives all the money he made to his family. You know, oh my God. He's just the sweetest, nicest man. That is so cool. That is very interesting. I need to watch that search for sure. So I'm he's like definitely one of my heroes. As you should. And he's really old. Really? Um, How old is he? You don't. That's not even on the script. <laughs> I don't even know. But he's blind now. And, oh and, my gosh. And, uh, yeah, he's kind of he's been frail, but um, yeah, yeah, he's a uh, he's definitely up there in my book. That is very. Uh, question that I don't know can be answered, but we're gonna try. Uh -oh. Are there any albums coming up or tours coming up for you guys? Well, we're, we're always doing shows. Um, when we when COVID hit, we had just put out a record, and we never even had a chance to tour that record because it's more of an acoustic record. Mm -hmm. Not that it's it's more done in vintage instruments, and most of those haven't really acoustic, and it's more of a mellow record. But it's that record was very 
therapeutic record um, for everyone in the band because everyone was going through different things and it all kind of came together at the same time. And, uh, but to do that, to do that tour, we would, we would require extra musicians and a completely different thing than what we yeah. do. We just plug in and go. You know. Yeah. I mean? So after having two years off and not making any money for two years, <laughs> you know, I think the main thing that since we've been doing since then is just trying to get back out there and and do do the do the you know not, not try to do the specialty thing yeah. right now. You know? yeah. like, so so um, I mean I'm always writing. Those guys are always writing. Uh, Robert just put out a solo record. Um, Dean put out a solo record. Uh, I think Eric's doing something. Uh, I can't remember what he's doing. Um, and I have a, I had that project that I was working on before uh, that I'm still um, working on because it's only it was only half finished. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. So um, all that's going on, which is weird because it was recorded five years ago now, or s five and a half, wow. six years ago, and the music is still like nothing sounds like it. Still. Really? Yeah. So I think it's got it's got a timeless vibe to it. So I'm excited <laughs> for that to come out someday. I don't know when it's going to happen. Feel like to be determined. <laughs> but as for STP, this <laughs> yeah. I, I, it could happen tomorrow, but you know, it's, it's um, we just haven't we haven't been doing that lately. Yeah, no, that's so cool. For the Mesa Singer Songwriter event, what what inspired you to be a part of this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this. Look at that. Look at that. This guy right here. This guy right here. Yeah. I, see that. I was like, it was like the first time I met him actually. Yeah. Um, it was through a mutual friend and. Uh, yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I don't know what it yeah. was about me that made you yeah, work. Yeah, you, know, <laughs> you know, I really, really dug this vibe, and you know, and, and I was just working on, you know, I did the Mason Music Festival, mm -hmm. and we were working on this singer-songwriter, and I was like, I speak very well, so I don't know why he wants me to speak. Uh, no, no, the light bulb came <laughs> on, and, you know, I had the click moment, and I was like, wait a minute, you're a great singer, you're a great songwriter, uh, hey, are you busy? <laughs> and he was gracious enough to entertain me and stuff, but, um, I'm so, I'm super stoked. I'm, I've been a big Stone Temple Pilots fan since day one. But oddly enough, I remember his first band, Dry Cell. After he had mentioned it to me, I was like, "Wait a minute!" And I, I met, I met, I, I might have even met him back in the day. Oh my god! Was, uh, yeah, I looked exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, <but laughs> then, nothing looks different. I, was, yeah, I really appreciate your guys' time today. Thank you so much for interviewing, cool. taking 20, 30 minutes to talk yeah. about yourself. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's alright. Everyone loves talking. I, I, I had to pull them in here, but now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Except the only thing is I don't have cameras on me when I talk about uh, myself. <laughs> Well, cool. Thank you so yeah, much. No, well, thank Thanks. you. I really appreciate awesome. it. I don't want to take up much more no, time. No, no, that's great. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I guess. Anything? I guess you want these signs. Yes, please. Come on, brother.